the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, alert us to the threatening dangers of our sins, and redeem us for your life of justice, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Would you join me in our responsive reading from Psalm 25? I'll read the regular type and invite you to read the verses in bold. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Rather, let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation, and you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your steadfast love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. You are gracious and upright, O Lord. Therefore, you teach sinners in your way. You lead the lowly in justice and teach the lowly your way. All your paths, O Lord, are steadfast love and faithfulness to those who keep your covenant and your testimony. Congregation may be seated. Hear these words from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called, the Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So we have to run a pretty tight ship on weekday mornings in the Bond house to get everybody to the places they need to go, especially in this year when the first adult leaves before the sun is up, even in the middle of springtime, and then one kid goes to one school by bus and the other goes to the local school by car. Everything has to move quickly. So even on a good day, everything's got to go exactly the right way, with the exact right amount of time for eating your Cheerios, putting on your shoes, getting your backpack together, all that. So you can imagine it wasn't a great morning a couple months back. When after having successfully gotten my son on the school bus, my daughter and I were about to pull out of the driveway when as we are beginning to move the car backward, we are thump, 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 and there was a flat tire on the rear back passenger side wheel of my vehicle. And after a quick call to the school to give them a heads up, there might be a chance that one of their students would be just a hair late. Anna came around back the side of the sedan with me to take a look at how we were going to change the tire in as quick a time as possible. And Anna, who's experienced mostly with flat tires, is her bike, which is remedied easily enough with just the air pump, you know, when it needs a little bit of fresh air, you know, after being in the garage during the winter, that kind of thing. She said, do you want me to go get the bike pump? I said, oh, I'm sorry, Anna, the problem that turns out is bigger than just what the bike pump can fix it. In fact, on a, the problem is bigger than just putting more air in this. Clearly, something has punctured a pretty decent sized hole. It may still be in there right now. After all, I pulled in the driveway yesterday with no problems at all and didn't notice anything. So somehow overnight, all the air has come out. And so this is going to take more than just your bike pump. But thanks. So this became one of those teachable moments. We got out all the spare tire changing kit and the, the uh, wrench and the lug nuts and all those things and jacked the car up while I'm occasionally looking at my watch to see how late she was going to be. 
so that she could see the problem wasn't just that you needed air in this tire. This tire was no longer going to be of service. So we had to take that tire off, get the spare on, and then, bigger picture, probably going to have to get a brand new tire to replace the spare, which is just a temporary fix, and might need a couple of uh, tires depending on what the damage was, and probably we're going to have to figure out what was it that caused the hole in the first place, because if it's something I left out in the driveway, I'm the one who needs to fix it. If it turns out it's the kids leaving things in the driveway, what do they do in the sharp objects? And if it's the neighbors leaving random bolts or nails or screws around, or somebody else in the neighborhood, all those things need to be addressed as well. To solve the problem of the flat tire on a Thursday morning requires more than just a bunch of hot air. It requires change. It requires everything to be put right. Sometimes I think we make the mistake of settling for too little in our hopes about Jesus. What, what I mean by that is sometimes we have this rather narrow sense of what Jesus is for, but the scriptures offer us a much bigger, wider, deeper picture of who he is, what he has come for, because the scriptures are a lot more honest about what our problem is that needs to be mended in us. For an awful lot of time in ancient Israel's history, there was this assumption, when God finally moved in a big way, when God finally sent the deliverer they'd been waiting for, the Messiah they'd been waiting for, he'd be just a, 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 a really powerful king. That's what they thought they needed. You know, to be like all the other nations around, that's what we need. Somebody who's powerful and strong, who, who commands attention, who barks orders and people do what he says, who, who commands armies and, and can maybe attack our enemies and maybe expand our borders. What we need is military might. What we need is a political solution. What we need is a king who will make us tough and strong and powerful. What we need is a a bunch of hot air we can put a crown on and say that's what will solve our problem. So for an awful long time, a lot of the people in ancient Israel and Judah kept hoping one day God's going to send us a big, powerful king, you know, like Pharaoh over there, or Nebuchadnezzar of the Babylonians, or Tiglath Pileser the third of the Assyrians. Do we want to have a powerful king like that? That will solve our problems. And it turns out, the scriptures say, our need is for something more than a lot of hot air. Our need is for something more than just someone who can bark orders. Our need is for something more than power. We need justice. We need righteousness. We need somebody who can put our relationships back together with one another, with us and God. And so the scriptures keep reminding, not only people a long, long time ago, but us as well, that the, the thing to be hoping for isn't just to, that God will give us more power to do what we want, because it turns out when we've got more power, each one of us, we have a way of abusing it. <laughs> but what we need most deeply is someone who can bring justice, someone who can bring righteousness, someone who can put all the things that are out of whack back together. And that means more than just pumping air into a tire that's got a gaping hole, and it means fixing the tire, it means fixing the whole system, it means maybe a couple of tires and a jack and a number of other tools, more than just a bike pump can fix. Sometimes I think, even all these thousands of years later, since then it's ancient days of Jeremiah, we keep settling for something too small of what we think Jesus is here for. We treat him sometimes like all Jesus is, is this guarantee of a spot in heaven somewhere, as though Jesus leaves us to continue to be rotten jerks to each other now in this life, but Jesus is just there as my heavenly fire insurance, or Jesus is my good luck charm that will help me find good parking spaces, or uh, help my kids get good grades, or my grandkids stay out of trouble, that kind of thing. We have this narrow picture. Is what I really need is just, you know, some God's power to help me get the things I want done in life, to help, you know, me get good parking spaces, and maybe a tax refund come April, that kind of thing. What our need, though, is something so much bigger, something deeper. We need someone who can attend to the broken places inside us, the rottenness inside us, not just out there at other people I don't like, but the meanness that's in me, the ways I can sometimes be kind of a rotten jerk, the way I can be short-tempered, the way I can be kind of rotten or unjust toward other people. I need someone who can deal with the broken places in me. I don't just need God to give me more power. I need God to do some rearranging in my heart. It turns out there's something in me that's gone wrong, and just filling me full of hot air will not solve the problem, it turns out. 
The scriptures keep pointing us to a deeper hope because they are aware we have a deeper need than just a flat that needs more air. There's greater repair that needs to happen. So you heard those words from Jeremiah who envisions to a people who are waiting for a king to come and finally kick some rear end of their enemies and finally restore law and order and be powerful and loud and angry. And instead, the prophet says, no, 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 what God's going to do is raise up someone who will do justice and will teach us to do justice, to treat one another rightly rather than just what's in my self-interest, to look out for the needs of other people rather than just what's good for me, and can make that become our way of life. What we need is someone who can change the broken places on the inside in us, not just by barking rules at us, but by forming us into a new kind of community where we learn to love, where we learn to serve, where we learn to do right even when nobody's looking. It's amazing to me. I don't think I paid attention to it for a long, long time, how in those words we read together from Psalm 25, the, the prayer that that ancient poet makes is to call out the God, someone who teaches us a new way of life. There's not a prayer for power. There. Dear God, give me more power so I can boss my enemies around or I can tell my neighbors what to do. It's teach us, God, because sometimes we can't find our way out of paper bag. Teach us, God, because sometimes we are awfully confused and screwed up. Teach us, God, how to live in ways that love one another, in ways that do justice to one another, in ways that fix all the ways we are broken. We live in a time and in a culture that so quickly settles for quick fixes and would want to just fix the uh, tire with a bunch of hot air, knowing now maybe get you another 10 feet out the driveway until it runs out of air again. God comes to us offering a deeper solution, deeper healing, because there is a deeper need in us. You, sisters and brothers, are part of that answer. We become this community in which the living Jesus helps to teach each one of us to live differently, to be people who practice justice, who don't just settle for what's good for me at the expense of somebody else, who teach us how to be people who share even when nobody's paying attention, who teach us how to do justice even when it costs us something. The ancient Israelites in their best moments realized what they needed was something more than just a king. They needed someone who would bring justice, someone who would teach them to love justice, to do mercy, to walk humbly with their neighbor and with their God. Maybe we're not that different. I've learned these days that when I'm running at an awfully busy, fevered pace, trying to get all the things done in the morning to get the kids to school and everything, that there are those times for teachable moments. Not just for me to teach, say, my daughter how to change a tire, although ask her what order you're supposed to change the lug nuts, and she will proudly tell you you turned in a star pattern. But more to the point, moments like that become teachable moments for me. When I'm tempted to be the one who settles for a quick fix or an easy solution, that what I most deeply need is a God who will change what's broken in me so that I can become the kind of person marked by justice, marked by love, marked by the character of the God who comes in in Jesus. And if God won't settle for anything less than that kind of restoration in me, maybe I shouldn't settle for anything less than that either. Amen. I'll invite you to rise as you're able, as together... We pray for the needs of the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people in God's beloved world. Gracious God, we ask of you on this day that you would mend all the places we are broken and all the kind of hurts that are in each one of us. Inside our own hearts, we would carry wounds from past wrongs or hurts. In the places where there are damage to our relationships with one another in our immediate circles of friends and of family and of neighbors, in our community where there's hostility or enmity, in our nation where there are so many places we are aching, and in this world where neighbors and nations are faced with troubles of all kinds, we ask that you would heal us all the way around and all the way down. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. On this day, we come to you asking that you would help us to be faithful witnesses who live out what your hope looks like in a world that needs it. 
In the midst of so many distractions and Christmas sales and noisy music in the background, we ask that you would keep us pointed toward your coming in Christ and that we might be reflections of that image of Christ for the people around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the ministries of this congregation and the ways we are seeking to reach out to our neighbors near and far, for those who will support the Share the, G Share the Joy program and help with gifts for kids in our local community, for quilters who make things that other people in need of comfort can find a refuge in, for ministry that reaches beyond our doors and inward to our own congregation and church family. We ask your blessing that you would strengthen us and point us in good directions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are hurting or troubled in body, mind, and spirit, we lift up to you especially on this day, Sheila, but also those we speak out loud or silently in our hearts. And for those, Lord God, whose names and needs are known only to you, and that you would give us the eyes to see those who are pushed to the margins or who feel invisible, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, good Lord, for those who have gone before us, who held out a vision you gave to them of a promised coming Savior, those who have taught us to hold on to hope, and those who are at rest in you. Gather us together in your new creation, in that resurrection feast that has no end, when Christ comes in the fullness of his kingdom. And help us to live in the meantime, walking in the footsteps of Jesus, as those who have gone before us have pointed the way. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, we give you all these names and needs, and we ask, too, that you would give us what you see that we need as we pray in the words Jesus himself gave us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Go forth into the world to embody hope. Serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people, love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the grace of Jesus Christ, who is on the way with us in love. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. I invite you to join as you are able in our closing song for today, In a Far Off Place, Jesus Come.
Go in peace and serve the Lord.